Good morning, Tisa. Um, you know, I was just laying in my bed and I woke up and God laid me on your God laid you on my heart um, to give you some words of encouragement. Um, you know, I can't imagine or understand what you're going through. I'm not going to even attempt to say I, I know because um, I don't know how I would feel with my situation if my son was laying there on the bed. Um, but uh, one thing I do know, um, I do know that when God tells me to say something, um, I'll say it. <clears throat> so I pray that these words go past your mind and they touch your soul and they give you a sense of peace. You know, God's peace, God's perfect peace, the peace that passes all understanding, you know. But I start out with this, First Samuel 15 and 22. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So this is why I have to say this, Jeremiah 20 and 9. But I say I will not mention his word or speak any more anymore in his name. His word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it. Indeed, I cannot. So these words that God has given me, I got to get them out. <laughs> so if I don't, they're going to be festering and, you know, in my stomach all day. But I want to get them out before I go to work. Jeremiah 23 and 29, it is not my, is not my word like fire declares the Lord and like a hammer which shatters a rock. You know, um, a lot of times people can sit here and say something, but you know, God showed me like, can you say something that goes past a person's mind and goes to their soul? You know, cause we can always just say, you know, oh, it's going to be all right. You know, and sometimes the believer needs to hear more than that. And not saying that's nothing bad and, you know, not everybody can you know, saying prophesy to somebody or speak to somebody in that manner. But sometimes God knows exactly what you need when you need it. <clears throat> Proverbs 25 and 11. The right word at the right time is like a custom made piece of jewelry. So I pray that these words are custom made and tailor made to your soul. <clears throat> Verse 12. And a wise friend's timely reprimand is like a gold ring slipped on your finger. Um, you know, I looked at your post yesterday, you know, and I gave you, uh, try to give you some words of encouragement, you know, and I noticed, you know, you was like, you know, no disrespect, you know, this is your, this is my son and you're exactly right. That is your son. God has given him to you because he knew that you can carry what you have right now. And God said that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. You know, God also said in his word that he would never put more on you or your son than you can bear. Second Chronicles 20 and 15, do not be discouraged for the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. You know, a lot of people talk about that all the time. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. But what they fail to mention is we still have to fight. <laughs> yeah, we got to fight away thoughts. We got to fight away spirits. You know what I'm saying? We got to fight, you know what I'm saying? Fight away people telling us, hey, you know, this is what you should do. Nah, we still got to fight. So I tell you, woman of God, put on the full armor of God. You know, sometimes when we get dressed and I'm talking about myself, I don't put on the full armor of God. I put on like all the armor, but like one or two pieces. No, nah, you need on the full armor of God. Why? Ephesians 6, 12 and 13. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. It's like that song that says, you know, all you can do is just stand after you've done all you can is just stand. First Timothy 6 and 12. My sister in Christ, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal light to which you were called when you were made. Your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. See, right now, the situation that you're going through, it don't feel so good. But you got a cloud of witnesses seeing like, I don't know how she can give God the glory through all of this. I don't know how she can keep praising God. And yeah, the Bible does say we're allowed to get mad, but sin not. It says that get angry, but sin not. But you got a cloud of witnesses and people are like, this woman is still giving God the glory. Colossians 3 and 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. 1 Timothy 1 and 18. So he was talking to Timothy, but I'm going to switch it. I'm going to put Tisa's name in there. 1 Timothy 1 and 18. Tisa, my child, I entrust you with this command in keeping with the previous prophecies about you so that you, 
so that by them you may fight the good fight. And I know sometimes we get tired, but my sister, you got all these people that praying for you. We, we fighting with you. You're not in this by yourself. Verse 19, holding on to the faith, a good faith, a good conscience, which some have rejected and thereby shipwrecked their faith. Don't let your faith get shipwrecked in this season. I know it's difficult. Galatians 6 and 9 and 10. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At the just the right time, we will reap a harvest of a blessing if we do not give up. Verse 10. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially those in the family of faith. So that's why I'm trying to give you words of encouragement today. And I just thank God for you because it just gives me a sense of another sense of purpose. And I thank God because it allows me to have an opportunity to be obedient, you know, to, to hear from God and to, you know, relay these words. And that's my prayer is that, you know, I speak these things that the spirit is speaking to me. Um, and, you know, just having an opportunity because obviously you had a need and God said, my child he told me to get up, you know, saying, and, and, you know, said, fulfill that need. And I pray, like I said, that these words give you words of encouragement. If you need to, you know, watch the video again, um, then watch it even in those, not, in those trying times, you know. Um, you know, and I thank God because God told me, if you take care of my business, I'll take care of your business. You know, so I'm going to just share a few a few stories with you probably already know. But, you know, God said, bring it, bring it back. Um, you know, I remember a long time ago when a pastor killed my aunt, you know, my aunt Pam, you know. Um, I got mad at God, you know, I looked up to heaven, you know, I looked up to my wall, <laughs> to the ceiling, <laughs> look up to heaven, right? Yeah. But, uh, I looked up there and I was like, you know, I kind of like jumped, jumped at God. Like, like I really was going to do something. Right. Anyway, but I looked up there and I said, why you let that happen? You know? And I cried, you know, I cried some more. Um, and then I began to hear God's words. God said, that's just a man. His gift was just preaching. And I, at that point in time in my life, I used to hold people, pastors on a pedestal. You know, I thought they were God's favorite people. And then everybody else was down here. That's where I thought I was at. You know what I'm saying? And God said, no, I don't hold no man higher than no other man. That's just his gift. You know, and I remember, you know, he ended up, you know what I'm saying, killing himself, um, running into a pole in a high, high speed, you know. And then after that, high speed, high, you know, high speed car chase. And then after that, you know, I began to thank God. I said, God, I said, I said, forgive me, um, you know, and then from then on, you know, I've never put people on a pedestal, you know, um, and that was one of the hardest things that I had to deal with. Um, and another one, you know, my other aunt was killed by a man um, who just recently just got out of prison, you know, been there, what, about 15 years or something like that, or I don't know how many more than that, probably, Um but, you know, the family is going through right now. But, you know what I'm saying? I still got to be about my father's business, you know, at the end of the day. And don't get me wrong. Like, I forgave him. You know, I don't have no malice or in, intent in my heart to do anything wrong to him. Because, I mean, I mean, God to deal with that. It's, it's, it's not my job to worry about that. You know what I'm saying? And, I mean, yeah, you know, when the family looks at it on... You know, I got to talk to some of the family members when they look at it from a natural perspective. They like, oh, we we feel like he deserved more, you know, because, you know, my aunt was was, you know, was trying to stop, you know, stop with crack cocaine. You know what I'm saying? Heroin. She's trying to stop with all that. You know what I'm saying? And she was trying to be done. But, you know, because of the kindness of her heart, you know, what I'm saying she went back just to help somebody get something. It's like, oh, you know where to get it. You know what I'm saying? You like, wow, like God, uh, like she tried to stop. She tried to stop and, and, and be done with that. And all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden she come back and, you know what I'm saying? She's gone. You know what I'm saying? We can't get her back. Like I can't see my Aunt Maddie smile. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, <clears throat> it kind of, you know what I'm saying, had a spiral depression in my cousin JR, you know what I'm saying, everything he goes through. But then I still try to speak life to him. You know what I'm saying? Um, and also, you know, you know, their mom is gone. But, you know, what I'm saying God has given me peace in that situation. You know, he's allowed me to have two daughters and I both named them after my aunts that were killed, you know. And I thank God for that, you know. Um, but again, like I said, I hope, you know, these words give you encouragement.
you know, I hope that allows you to, to, to fight the good faith, you know, to fight away those thoughts. Because, yeah, I mean, obviously, when you look at your son, there's a point in time you're going to be like, that's messed up. Like, you tried to kill my son. Yeah. You know, but, I mean, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And just allow God to, he said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. God is not mocked. He sees everything. You know what I'm saying? And trust and believe. God said he will judge us. Ecclesiastes 12 and 14. God will judge us for everything we do. Even words, you know what I'm saying? Even if, you know, the intent was to take his life out. And it didn't happen. God ain't playing. God says, touch not my anointed. <clears throat> you know? Um, but again, my sister in Christ, you know what I'm saying? I pray that, you know, these words, you know, resonate. And also, like I said, continue to fight the good faith. Um... I don't know if I'll get a chance, but probably next weekend I'm going to try to come home, see see some family, and see y'all. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to just continue to pray. Um, but, yeah, like I said, I, hopefully these words, you know, like I said, they was fire shut up in my bones. Um, and God told me to get them out. And I thank you because, you know, when I was in my car today, um, I was in my van today, you know, I just... You know, God, I just began to get high, you know, just listening to this song that I had on my, you know, my thing and this Israel hooting, um, not unto us. And it just, it just, I, mean, I just could just cry because of the purpose that God showed me. Like, this is part of my purpose, you know what I'm saying? And God is going to elevate me, you know what I'm saying? And give me a greater platform. But I thank God because I continue to stay humble and just continue just to give people words of encouragement. You know what I'm saying? And I thank God for that because people really value, you know what I'm saying, the spirit of God that res you know, resides inside me, you know what I'm saying, just to have the anointing. But it's not about that. It's just about being about my father's business. And like I said, I do this to give God all the glory, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I definitely thank God for you because obviously you had need and God impressed it on my heart. And again, God may have pressed it on other people's hearts and things like that to pray or anything like that. But I just want to pray that these words resonate. So Heavenly Father, right now, Lord, I thank you right now for my sister. Lord, I thank you right now for the friends, family, and everybody that is speaking words of encouragement, Lord. But I, I pray that these words go past her mind, Lord, to her heart to move any anger or bitterness, Lord, and then to her soul, Lord, to allow her to have the peace that passes our understanding, Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit to empower her, Lord, and to show her that, Lord, that you got this, Lord, that she can continue to glorify you, Lord, and not be angry, Lord. And there's going to be days where it's going to be tough, Lord. There's going to be days where it's easier, Lord. But I just ask you continue to help her, even though you allow and continue to help her son, Lord, as he continues to fight the good faith, Lord. And we know that, Lord, you said in your word, Lord, that no weapon for and against us shall prosper. And no weapon. And you also said, Lord, that that means for our children as well. And any tongue that comes against the Lord shall be condemned, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you continue to even everybody around this, Lord, will begin to see you, Lord. will see your glory, Lord, to come to, Lord, and to for forgiveness, Lord. Forgiveness, because there is obviously a point where forgiveness has to come, Lord. And I just ask that you give Tisa, Lord, my sister in Christ, you give her the joy that allows to come in the morning, Lord, and allow it to continue to come in the morning, Lord. And when she prays and when she reads, Lord, and when she looks at the scripture and the word, Lord, that it, it resonates in her heart, Lord. It resonates, Lord. Right now, we can't see how you're going to get the glory, but we know that you're going to get the glory and the purpose and what you have for his life because, Lord... They can't kill purpose. They try to kill purpose inside of him, Lord. And you can't kill it, Lord. Because obviously you have work. He has work that needs to be done, Lord. And that's why he's still here on this earth. Lord. That's why he's still laying there, Lord. And we know that, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. Because you said the bigger the struggle, the bigger the blessing. And Stu must have, Vernon must have some, some purpose in his life, Lord. That's why he's still right there, Lord, and we thank you for him right now, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that he'll be able to get up, Lord, and continue and to spread the word, Lord, and to do what you called him to do. Lord, we just thank you for protection, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, even in that, Lord, that you allow the doctors, the nurses, everybody, even in the hospital, Lord, to know who you are, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord. And we just continue to pray and keep us lifted up in prayer in Jesus' name. Amen love you so i'm out there get ready to go to work i'm, I'm still high <laughs> i'm just like i said 
this God just hit me, but it's, it's just a blessing. Like, and I, I love to do this, and I'm gonna continue doing that. Um, but I just want to thank God for y'all. Thank God for everybody, and everybody continue to pray. Love y'all.